Hotchkiss, leave a message. Hello? Yes? Ahoy hoy. Hi, Hotchkiss here. Oh, Francine, dear, I'm so glad you called. I've been having the most infuriating problem with my internet. Oh, you young people are so refreshing, always in search of new identities. The problem is that I downloaded this program called Weather Monkey. At my age, it's important that I keep abreast of all meteorological developments. But now I'm starting a new book, and I can't focus on my work because the Weather Monkey keeps yelling the weather at me. I will do no such thing. That would be tantamount to murder. Brilliant and fantastic. Oh, yes, Samantha, you are a ticket. I would love to help you, but uh, how do I know you again? Aha, now I remember you. If life were a good book, you'd be my favorite reoccurring character. Egypt? Well, why didn't you say that instead of chattering away about my internet problems? You found my book while you were in Egypt. <gasps> the serendipity is as delectable as Chateaubriand smothered in lavender lemon juice. I am at your disposal. Oh, dear, I sign and send lots of things. <gasps> ah, a love story. Oh, break out the tissue papyrus, because when I'm done, there won't be a dry Horus in the house. Look it up, dear. Ramses the Second and Nefertari shared a love so vast the world could scarcely contain it. I'm talking about the kind of love you spell capital L, capital O, heart instead of a V, capital E. They stood side by side and ruled the world, but as they saw the years stretch out before them, they were keenly aware that a handful of decades would never cut it. They needed to be together always. And relevant. The ancient Egyptians believed that life was little more than a dress rehearsal for eternity. I found records that they concocted a plan to be together forever, side by side. They foresaw a volatile future for their kingdom, and they were correct. They knew they would have to enact safeguards. That's why in 1904, when QV-66, the so-called tomb of Nefertari, was found, her body was not there. If I were a gambling Hotchkiss, I'd say 60-40. For the same reason, I never carry my passport in my purse when I travel. Some things are too valuable to leave in a tempting place. I found myself quite lost in the South not too long ago, and I must admit that I've got a keen fascination for all things Southern Gothic. The cotillions... The manners, the history. I must say, it has given me a case of the intellectual vapors. And the food. <gasps> Red-eye gravy, shrimp and grits. Do you know that Southerners have 56 words for biscuit? Hush, child. I have a delicate constitution and mustn't be contradicted. Oh, yes. The team in which everyone died, is that the one? Oh, heavens, yes. It's deadly out there in the desert. Think about it. You're going out there in search of dead bodies. There must be a reason they're in favor of the area. Indeed not. That had already been discovered. They were searching for Nefertari's mummy. Oh, it's best you not concern yourself about that now, given your current location. It's a complicated issue. It makes no earthly sense, now does it? But still, still the tombs have claimed enough lives to make a fool of logic. It was one of the most significant finds in archaeology. They call it the Sistine Chapel of Egypt. It's where my fascination with the royalty of Egypt was born. The color alone took my breath away. We think of ancient Egypt as being a subdued sand color, but it was a riotous display with all the visual delights of a midsummer gelato shop cooler case. They only found kneecaps, which supposedly means that her tomb was robbed. I do. What good is the mummy without the context? It's the placement in the tomb that makes the mummy valuable. There are two queens I find most fascinating in ancient Egypt, and for exactly the same reason. They were hidden. Hotshepsut is the first. 
Exactly. Twenty some years of peace and stability, and after she dies, thut most the thirds, ancient cronies try to erase her from the record. Jealousy, revenge, fear that his reign would never equal hers. You name it, but you can't keep a good woman down. Despite the efforts of Thutmose Third's supporters, her legacy endured. In my opinion, she's the opposite. She was obsessively preserved in the historical record, but it was her tomb that was hidden. There was something strange about QV sixty six. I think that might be why it is off limits to this day, to you and me at the very least. There is a rumor that the tomb has a clue to the true location of Nefertari's mummy. Who knows? I'll tell you this: I didn't have time to read all of the hieroglyphs, but I noticed that the syntax was a little, shall we say, wonky. True, but it was almost as if Nefertari and Ramses the Second had their own language. I thought you were Lily. Hotchkiss prank! Oh, you're such a good sport, Nadine. <laughs> That's a little silly of her, don't you think? Curses may only be a figment of our overactive imaginations. There are more pressing things to worry about. Most Egyptologists die because the desert is inhospitable and positively crawling with diseases, horrid molds, and bacteria that have been breeding for thousands of years unchecked. And let's not forget the lack of structural integrity of most of the tombs. Oh dear, everybody dies, but life isn't worth living if you don't take a few risks. Although I guess I should stress that everyone dies much faster in the desert, much much faster. Yes, yes, I have. He is December on my men of archaeology calendar. It existed the second I made it. Is he there with you? He is. Oh, I am not an advocate of pulpy romance novels, but if I were, I'd call that an archibald trait. In chapter one, he'd swagger into the excavation site, the picture of a rascal with his dusty leather jacket and decidedly European haircut, his cocky ne'er do well smirk displaying his perfectly white teeth. But by the end, he'd be sweetly holding flowers and saying, "Professor Hotchkiss, I'm dying to discuss your latest publication." A colleague of mine has guilted me into editing her latest romance novel, and I must confess I cannot wait until the project is completed. Reading page after page is absolutely wreaking havoc on my metaphors. Anyway, what were we talking about? Abdullah, that's what. He's a cold-blooded hotshot with only one setting: success. Oh, sorry. I've also been helping my nephew break into the movie trailer business. Oh, Hotchkiss! Why must you always burn the candle at both ends? He's a good archaeologist who knows Egypt inside and out. He could teach you a thing or two. Just don't pick up the attitude. Oh, that old gem! Yes, who cares? Well, unless they're sending us a bill, does it matter? Oh no, dear! You mustn't let those things bother you. Some of us have keen observational skills and a rigid adherence to the scientific method. And some of us have thought processes that best resemble a pinata explosion at a sugar-fueled child's birthday extravaganza. Either way, if it encourages people to witness the marvels of ancient Egypt in person, it's good work, in my opinion. You may as well be asking me if I believe Brian Abernathy Fortinbright exists. I don't know, and further, I could only guess. Yes. Now, given the fact that there are seven plus billion people on Earth, it stands to reason that he may be a real person. And if we apply the Drake equation, we will find the astronomical—no wordplay intended, dear—number of habitable planets in the universe. It is possible that the Anunnaki may exist. But since the evidence is shaky at best, I am much more interested in the here and now. Some say if you look at the hieroglyphs, you'll see some of the figures holding flashlights. Well, not exactly. It's easy to see what you want to see. Seeing the tombs always made me feel quite simply famished. As the long days would pass, the murals would become quite simply delicious. Osiris would be holding the most wonderful caramel flans. Reeds would be chicken wings, and cipher for twisted flax would transmogrify into warm, straight out of the oven garlic knots right before my eyes. My point is that. You can see what you want to see, and what I want to see is that takeout menu for the Spice Town Speakeasy. I may have to put you on hold, dear. Just a moment. Hotchkiss here. I'd like baguette stuffed with mushroom and sautéed asparagus, and a beef jerky salad with caramel vinaigrette.
Is that still you, Norma? Is this your first day at Spice Town? I'm Hotchkiss. We'll be talking to each other quite often. Would you kindly summarize your personality for me, for efficiency's sake? Oh, drat and drat. Well, perhaps I'll just be dull and prepare myself a curried waffle sandwich. Then you are in for a treat. I like my puzzles as tempting as the gooseberry pie from San Rios in Little Brazil, and as complex as the ginger lime sauce they lovingly smother it in. You should focus on what doesn't make sense. Look for a part of the pattern that has no earthly business being there. Of course I do. Yes, it's best we start with the boys. There's among her kept chef, meaning among is with his strong arm. Oh dear, you get a piece of paper and a pen and you write down whatever you like for the next five minutes. Paul Ray Hair Wenemeth. Ray is with his strong arm. Mary, beloved of Ray. Mary Autum, beloved of Autum. Oh, these names. The best part about ancient Egyptian names is that there are no ancient Egyptians around to correct your pronunciation. Oh, come back when you're ready for the girls. Come back when you're ready for the girls. Merit Amen, the beloved of Amen. Henatawi, the mistress of two lands. Yes, so it seems favoritism isn't a modern invention. Nebatawi, the lady of two lands. Oh my, oh, oh my, yes, let's see. A human and three animals. A jackal was Duwamatef, baboon, hoppy, and Kebasenueth. They also represented the four cardinal points, each protecting a sacred organ. I seem to remember that Hoppy was the lungs. I thought you'd never ask, do your worst. That is not an easy one. I do recall hearing that Nefertari's cat's name meant destiny. That could be a good place to start. Bye, dear. Goodbye. Hotchkiss out. I need you to do some searching for me. I've decided to restart my book project. Can you gather some information for me? Great! Who is above all the doors in the main antechamber? Thank you. It's Nancy Drew. This is Nancy Drew. Maybe you should uninstall it? <sighs> Maybe turn it down? Nancy Drew, we've met a few times. I'm in Egypt, and I need your help. I don't know how to respond to that. I read your book, and I thought maybe you could help. I didn't exactly find it. You sent it to me. You even signed it. What do you know about Nefertari? Uh, what? That's sweet. Why not be buried side by side? What are the chances we found Nefertari's tomb? I still don't get all this business with QV66. Why build a fake tomb? So what are you working on now? I love that area. I don't think that's true. Have you heard of an expedition that went off in search of Nefertari years ago? Yes. Do you think that story is true? But this expedition wasn't searching for QV-66, right? What do you think happened to them? What is the story with curses? What makes it so complicated? Still what? You mentioned an expedition that found QV-66, Nefertari's tomb. And you don't think Nefertari was entombed there? You disagree? Why is Nefertari so important? I think I've heard of her. She was the pharaoh that was almost removed from the historical record, right? Why? Stub. And Nefertari? How sure are you that Nefertari's tomb was hidden? It is? Really? I don't know how hieroglyph syntax could be non-wonky. Lily seems to be taking this curse business very seriously. <sighs> the other Lily? That's what I think. That's less than reassuring. Have you heard of Abdullah? You're kidding me. Does that exist? Yes. He seems full of himself. I no longer know. Have you heard of the theory that aliens built the pyramids? Who cares? With all of your work, I assume you'd at least care. Do you believe the Anunnaki exist? Is that a name you just made up? Same here. You said the evidence of the Anunnaki is shaky. What evidence is there? Okay, that's strange. I'm still on. That, that can't be a real food item. <clears throat> Nancy? No, it's Nancy Drew. 
Still on the line, still in Egypt. I need your help. The hieroglyphs here don't make sense. Do you know anything about Nefertari's children? Can you tell me their names? How do I spell that? Sure. I'm ready for the daughter's names now. Got it. Okay. And the children were mentioned in order, from oldest to youngest, right? Perfect. Thanks. Great. Can you help me sort out some canopic jars? I need your help with a riddle. The path lies in destiny. Can you tell me the names of Nefertari's sons again? Can you tell me the names of Nefertari's daughters again? Can you tell me the names of Nefertari's daughters? If it means you'll tell me the daughters' names, then sure. I'll go look right now. Isis, Nephthys, Mott. I found out who is above all the doors in the main antechamber. It's Isis, Nephthys, Mott. I found out who is above all the doors in the main antechamber. It's Mott. I figured out what that cat has in its paws in the mural. I know what the goddess next to Horus is wearing. I know what the statue of Osiris is holding. I know how many vases are on the pedestals in the passage to the cat mural. I know what's on the wall trays in the cat's tomb. I figured out what's strange about the mural above the main entrance. I found out what Sekhmet is holding in her left hand in the cat's tomb.